In this video, I'll show you how to make a button that toggles the audio on and off throughout your Adobe Captivate project. Okay, let's get started here. Um, I had a request from one of my viewers to have an audio button that would, when toggled, would uh, mute the music or the audio, the narration, uh, throughout the course and I thought I would uh, demonstrate that in a quick tutorial today very straightforward it requires one piece of advanced action and the ability to uh, create a multi-state object so this is specifically for Adobe Captivate 9 or newer so I've created this particular template which I'm using for a, a current client that, uh, that I'm developing some e-learning for and uh, I've added this, uh, this particular uh, button, which is actually a smart shape being used as a button to the template. And the idea here is that, first of all, this button is going to appear on the first slide. And if we go to the timing tab, you can see that I have it display for the rest of the project. And that way, the button, its appearance, as well as its functionality is available to the end user at any time during the course. So, and I've also checked off place object on top. This is something I recommend that you do, uh, especially for things like interface controls and things like that, because you never know what might happen on a slide later on. If you add an image, you don't want it to overlap uh, and cover up the button. So uh, that's pretty straightforward. The other thing that you need to do to prepare this button is that you're gonna need to add one additional state uh, for this to be visually effective. And if I click on the state view option here, you can see that I've got a normal state, which is what you're seeing right here. And there's a rollover and a down state, really only for desktop, because rollover doesn't really apply for, for mobile. But here's the additional state that I've added. And it's just the, a grayed out version of the button, as you can see here. And I've called this state mute. In other words, we're turning the audio off. So in normal state, it will be white and very bright. And if we're gonna turn the sound off, we're gonna make it grayed out so that it appears not to be an option. So there's a visual cue to the end user that you've muted the button. Now, all this requires is a very simple advanced action, and I'll show you that right now. Let me exit the multi-state view. And uh, let's take a look at the actions tab. Again, with that button still selected, you can see I have a script called mute underscore unmute. And let me show you what's involved there. Here we have um, a, a conditional action. So what it's checking for is the current state of a system variable. And this system variable is CP command mute. Now, when you have system variables with part of the title being command, C-M-N-D, um, these are, these are system variables that you can use as a command, as you can make a change to something uh, within the system. And they don't just simply provide information like many other variables do. So what I'm checking for is if the command mute is zero, in other words, the sound is on, run the following set of actions. And I'm going to assign a value of one to CP command mute. In other words, I'm gonna turn the audio off and then I'm gonna change the state of the button just pressed from normal to mute. Now, if command mute is not equal to zero, this is what happens here. We're gonna assign CP command mute with zero. In other words, turn the audio back on and change the state of the mute button back to normal. So really straightforward, it just simply toggles between the two here. So if I close this and we just run this project uh, from, let's say, well, from this point here, let's just preview this in a browser. Welcome to the Workplace Violence Prevention Online Course. So as you can see, when I click on the mute button, the background music and the audio narration that was added turns on and off. So I can totally control that 
And that's the basic premise of a lot of the toggle controls that you can add in Adobe Captivate. Simply check for its current state and then change it to the opposite of that state. And that's really all we've done. Guys, if you're new to Captivate and are unsure about building your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My goal is always to achieve your business goals through creative, effective learning. You can find out more by visiting my website at paulwilsonlearning.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at paulwilsonld. And don't forget, to get notified of new videos, you must subscribe to my channel.